Hi, it's me Jacqueline. Welcome to my channel. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to my channel and join me at Patreon. Link in the description. What an adventure this was going to be. I'd been in Tokyo for a month of training, but now it was the real thing. I was on my way to Hokkaido to be an English teacher. I would be teaching in a school for one year in a small town called Kamakawa. According to my trainer in Tokyo, it was a quiet place and the school had about 200 children that traveled quite a distance to get to it. He also told me that the trains here do not run very often as it is so sparsely populated, especially where I was going. After getting off at the airport in Sapporo, I had to, to get the train. Luckily, it was just a single train that went through Kamakawa on its way to Kitami. I had the kanji for Kitami on a piece of paper so I couldn't go wrong. After looking at the departure board for some time, I saw the kanji I needed and headed to platform 8. The train was already there so I hopped on it. This was easy. You can survive in Japan without Japanese after all. The train set off and I thought to myself, two hours and I'll be there. I looked at the notes that my trainer had given me. It was then that I saw something for the first time. At the bottom of the page it said, Note, be careful when getting the train. You want the express, two hours. The local train takes five hours and there are only two each day. I wasn't sure which one I had got on. Within five minutes, I had an answer. We stopped. This must be the local train. It was the second one, so I would arrive at about 8 p.m. Shit. Oh, well. No problem. I was early and my job didn't start until Monday. Anyway, the scenery was really nice, so it wasn't so bad. On a few occasions, we stopped for a couple of minutes at certain stations. I think it was to keep on schedule. With no passengers, he must have been very early. After about 10 stops, I noticed the buildings becoming few and far between. It really is isolated here, I thought. Some of the stations we stopped at were little more than a hut and a platform. I wondered if anyone ever stopped at these places. I did notice that nobody had got on the train for a while and I was actually alone. We arrived in a small town called Takikawa. Surprise! Somebody got on the train. Well, not just somebody, but a group of about 10 girls. They were all giggling and talking and seemed quite excited for some reason. I noticed that a few of them had the same t-shirts on, while some of the others had the traditional sailor school uniform. God, Japanese girls are so cute. The t-shirts had Japanese letters on them. I knew a few of them and managed to recognize our I, N and G U. Ringu. I knew these characters because I'd watched the movie The Ring. There were two other characters before them that I didn't know. The girls must have been part of some club or something. I know it was usual for children to go to clubs at the weekend, and they always wore their school uniform. These were not really children, though. A couple of them were smoking, and they all had varying breast sizes. I thought they were all 15 or 16. One or two of them glanced at me. I must have stood out like a sore thumb. One of them said something, and they giggled a little, and then more of them looked at me. What did she say? It didn't matter. I was just enjoying looking at them, all the time making sure I didn't stare. We passed through a few more stations without anyone else getting on. I glanced at the girls again. They all had mobile phones and were playing with them. Texting, taking photos, and giggling. It was then that I noticed one girl was asleep. Her legs were slightly apart, and I had a great view of her panties. They were white with little frills. I moved a little in my chair to get a better view. Was it me, or did she move her legs even wider apart? I had a fantastic view, and if I didn't know better, I'd say she was flashing to me. This was even better than the scenery outside. I was staring now, but because she was asleep, I could look for as long as I wanted. One of the other girls suddenly shouted something and they all looked at me. Shit. Caught. The other girl woke up and seemed to have a smile on her face. The girls came over to my chair and started talking. I didn't understand them, but I could tell that they weren't happy. One of the girls said, You like look at Pantai? She spoke English. A little broken, but not bad. I didn't know what to say. I was now surrounded. The girl that was asleep said something and I heard the word panties. They all giggled and got excited. They see your panties. Now I was worried. I tried to make a break for it, but I was quickly grabbed and held down. They were strong. 
One of them had me in a headlock and I knew I was stuck. They were hurting me so I stopped struggling. It dawned on me what the first two characters on the t-shirts were. Ari and S.U. Rizuringu, wrestling. Two of them pulled my trousers down and they all giggled again at the sight of my panties. What is your name? said the English speaker. Answer Japanese. I don't know Japanese, I said. Watashi wa yuki disu, she said. I wasn't sure what that meant. I repeated her words. Watashi wa yuki disu. They all started laughing. Your name is Yuki, she said. You are girl, why wearing boy panties? I started to struggle again. This only made them angry and one of the girls holding my arm started to twist. I thought she was going to break it. One of them started looking through her bag. Then with a little shriek of delight, she held up a pair of white panties similar to the ones I had been looking at. I knew what was coming next. They quickly ripped off my underpants and rolled the panties up my legs. They were small, but they managed to squeeze them on me, making sure my bits were between my legs. It was quite painful, and when I looked down, they were so tight that it seemed like I had a girl's bits. One of them threw my underpants out of the window. They were now all laughing. One of them took a photo on her phone. Others followed suit with a few of them having to get the phones from their bags. There was another shriek followed by lots of giggling. I couldn't see what was going on as my head was still locked. I looked to the right to try and make out what the giggling was when one of them came to my chair holding a bra. They all giggled again. They got my jacket and shirt off very easily and put my arms through the bra straps. They were pushing me around like a doll, all the time twisting and pulling to stop me struggling. The bra was fastened at the back which amused them considerably. It was really tight. One of them took off my socks and rolled them up and put them in the cups. Now you like girl, the English speaker said. Hello, Yuki-chan. They all started taking photos of me. The train stopped. Please somebody get on and save me. Nobody. Off we went again. I was hoping they had finished and I could get dressed again. I was getting cold. Please stop, I am cold, I said. Yuki-chan is cold, said Yuki. Yuki-chan need clothes. One of the girls in a sailor uniform pulled a t-shirt out of her bag and held it up. It was a wrestling club t-shirt. Yuki held it against me and started shaking her head. Not cute, she said. Another girl wearing one of the t-shirts started looking in her bag. She pulled out her school blouse. It was white with blue trim and had a big ribbon on the front. They put it on me. It fit too well. I struggled again. It was no use. All the girls started pulling various items of clothing out of their bags. There was a pleated navy blue skirt, some white frilly ankle socks, and some woolly knee-length leg warmers. These were quickly put in place amidst their laughing and twisting and holding. I was totally humiliated. I wasn't sure if I wanted anybody to save me as they would see me dressed like a Japanese schoolgirl. I'll just see it out and they'll leave me to get dressed, I thought. The final item of clothing they put on me brought the most giggles. One of the girls had a pair of Hello Kitty panties. They were pink and really frilly with a picture of a cat on them. They put my legs through the holes and pulled them up. Because my manhood was safely tucked away, they fit perfectly. Yuki-chan is cute, said Yuki. Not pretty. What did she mean? I realized what when another girl took a makeup set from her bag. We make Yuki-chan become pretty, said Yuki. Get boyfriend. That was it. I had to get away. I started to struggle again. My arms were being twisted, and there was a girl sat on my chest and two holding my legs. The girl giving me a headlock started to squeeze. My head was feeling light, and then I passed out. When I started to wake up, I became aware of a few things. Notably, the restraints holding my arms to a fence and my knees to a bench that I was sat on. My knees were tied so I could not close my legs. The skirt I was wearing was rolled up and tied with a belt so it was really short. Anyone passing by would have a great view of my panties, and there was nothing I could do about it. My face felt strange, too. They had put makeup on me. I could feel very thick lipstick and something stuck to my eyelids. I blinked and my eyelashes nearly stuck together. I had huge false eyelashes on. They had also put clips in my hair to make two small ponytails and painted my toenails red. Bye-bye, Yuki-chan, they all said. I looked up quickly to see them all waving at me and laughing while holding up my clothes from inside the train. I quickly regained my senses. I was on the platform and the train was leaving. 
I tried to get up, but was held tight. They had used tights to tie me up, and there was no way I was going to escape. I watched the train go into the distance. I started to think about how this happened. The glance and the giggling when the girls got on the train, the pan eye flashing, and the satisfied smile of a plan come to fruition. The bitches had set me up. They planned to do this from the beginning. What was I to do? I was dressed as a Japanese schoolgirl in the middle of nowhere, with no money, no clothes, and no way of contacting anyone. After an hour or so had passed, I think I heard a train coming. Thank God, I thought. As it came towards the platform, I noticed that it wasn't slowing down. I could see people pointing at me and laughing as it passed. It went right through the station and into the distance. Of course, I thought, the express train. It doesn't stop here. The next train here would be about 3 p.m. tomorrow. I started to panic. What if nobody is on the train tomorrow? I looked around the station where I was sitting. There was nothing here. Just this bench, a platform, and a wall behind me. I couldn't see any houses near, but there were a few buildings in the distance. Nobody was coming here. Where is here anyway? I wondered. I looked around for a sign. Nothing. Maybe behind me? There was a sign, all right. In huge letters written in lipstick, there was a message in Japanese. Under it in small English letters, it read, My name is Yuki. Look at my panties. Please subscribe for the next part and visit my Patreon page for early access.